Yeah, so I'm asking, you have not answered that question. What kind of alcohol will you give to, to Vivian? Some what? <laughs> wow. That will be interesting. Vicky, what did you say that you are good at doing? The, the Twitch or the what? What, what? what did you call that? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I'm gonna practice and then I'm gonna I'm gonna show out to everybody because I'm gonna show out girl. Uh -huh. and split on the table. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be interesting. Shanta, where will you be watching this this double dance going on? With a love shade on her head. Wow. wow. <laughs> this is awesome. I wonder where Geneva will be. Wow. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. <laughs> you know what I think God will say to the angels? He will tell the angels, take the whole 24 hours and go on vacation. You come back after that. Come back after that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let them hang out with us. Yeah, let them hang out with the prince and princess. This is this is something else, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mary, read us, read us the powerful key for tonight. What does it say? Failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. Vicky, I hope you have that written down. And Nancy. Failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. You see? Just for the fact that members of your family were not known on the earth. Nobody knew them. Nobody knew that you exist. Your family name existed. Nobody knew it. So you were born into such a mentality that nobody knows about you folks. It's not a good thing. Failure is not an option. Read it again to us, Mary. Failure, failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. Winning is your destiny. You were born to win. I have said this over and over that your assignment, your primary assignment on the earth is found in the blessing that God gave to Adam and Eve. It does not mean that since no one has been a winner in your family history, that you should not attempt it. Everything is about somebody must start something. Some time ago, we talked about that to erase the tears, to erase failure, in your family line, to erase failure in your bloodline, you must begin winning. Winning is how 
you stop the cycle of failure. Do you know how bad it is to be a failure? Let, let me tell you guys uh, a little bit of something that you need to be aware of. One failure in your life, one disappointment in your life will stop you or will begin to inform you whatever you wanted to do <coughs> to step out, it will remind you that remember what happened. That's why um, Victoria's son played a soccer game last year. And they had a coach that was, I don't really care whether these kids win or not. I don't really care whether they win or not. They are just having fun. But they are just having fun. Every game that Trivia went, that Victoria's son went, they whooped them. Not even a draw. They were being whooped. Six, 12, 10. They felt, I said to Victoria, Victoria, I don't like this. I am not liking this. I want your son to be on the side of those who win. Because if he is on the, on the side of those who fell too much, it will begin to take root in him. Because we are simply, we human beings, we are programmable. We, we can be programmed. The Holy Ghost can program us or devils can program us. Wicked people can program us. Wicked leaders and rulers can program people and put them where they are forever. They will not be able to do anything. They remain there. They remain in failure forever. You see, we fast in order to gather power from God Almighty in order to tap into Jesus, to tap into the Father, to tap into his government, to tap into the Holy Ghost. We fast in order to tap into them so that we will become winners. We are supposed to be the number one people that goes for the winning, for the winning team. So I keep telling Victoria, I don't like this. My spirit don't like this boy going every weekend to go and play soccer and they get whooped. They get defeated. It will start getting into your son and forming a file. And the file will become updated and it will become a program. Let this boy be exposed to those who win. And I, I do not want Trivial ever to be coached by that man. If not, I'm coming to California just for that one purpose, to make sure that this boy is coached by a professional coach who has played real soccer in a professional capacity. That's the kind of person. I am coming to pay the money if it reaches that point. That's what I told Victoria. We prayed about it, but Vicky knew how my voice sound that I am not playing. So what did Vicky do? Victoria then decided to put the son to be coached by a professional soccer player. Right in California. To be coached by a professional soccer player. I also told Victoria, whenever professional soccer players are playing, not kids playing, but professional soccer players playing, let this boy go and sit with you and watch. Are you guys aware? that Victoria signed the child up to be coached by a professional. Victoria, what happened? Um, he's on a, a different team now. 
and they're winning. They are winning. Every match, they are winning. If it's not a draw, they will win. They never lose a match. Now, how do your son feel? How is his the mean how, how, how is his composure now? Tell me between that and last year, how is he now? He's ready now. He's ready. He's happy. He loves it. Yeah. See, I'm giving you guys just an examples. If you expose yourself too much to failure, failure become what you win. You will continue to fail. In everything you do, you will fail. Why? Because you've been exposing yourself to failure. You've been exposing yourself to disappointment. You are doing things, you are saying things that make failure happens to you until your name becomes failure. Winning is your destiny. You are destined to win and you were born as a human. We are not even talking about you being a Christian here. The reason why you came to the earth is to win. That's your final destination is winning. Heaven itself is a winning thing because you make decisions. If you made a decision to become born again, why don't you make a decision to become a winner in life? In every area you can think about it. Yeah. I was with a soldier yesterday. We were having a very strong conversation. And I said to him, I said, the thing that I don't like about people joining the military are those who join the military after four years, they quit. Why then did you join the military? You went to college and had, had a four-year degree. Some of, some of the people have masters and PhDs. And you fold it, wrap it, and you put it in your luggage. You're not working with it. You see, everything that you have, you must turn it into success. Whether you're a housewife, whether you are a mother, and looking after minor little kids, there is nothing you cannot turn into a success. The stories that I told my kids when they were young, I recorded them. Why? I'm going to publish them eventually. Everything should be turned into a business. Failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. The greatest tendency is to give up very easily. If I was not to do anything about the way I look, I would have been a very fat person, very big. Because it runs in my father's side. My mom is not that big. Even though I follow after her, but you don't know when the other side will creep in. So I have to do everything. Steamer, sauna, eat right, gym, do exercise. That's why, that's why at one point last year, my chest increased because of exercises that I'm doing. And when some, some men around me, they started, they said, wow, you are doing a lot of exercise. Look at your chest. I said, yep. Why? I'm trying to make sure that some of the things that kill off the people doesn't kill me. Failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. The issue here is giving up very easily. I watch that man that you will invite him to your business, especially he goes around like restaurant, ice cream places, and try to update them. I don't know whether what that program is called on, is it NBC or where? I don't know whether that guy is based in Chicago. 
and he will even put out his money to help make your business better. I watched as he gave even those who were graduates. There is this girl who is a lawyer from Harvard Law School. He gave the girl, that lady, she's a married lady with children or a child. He gave her some bunch of candies to go and sell in the mall. He picked people from different race, class, all that to come and work for him. A woman who is supposed to be a guru in tax, in tax things, doing tax, could not interpret a tax paper that he gave to her. Instead of that woman saying, okay, I'm going to learn very quickly. You know what she did? She quit. I was, I was so disgusted with it. If you want to be a winner, you're going to be a master. You're going to know everything about something. That's why I'm good at what I do. <clears throat> because I pick one thing, I want to know everything about it. I don't want nobody coming to tell me about it. Winning is your destiny. <clears throat> Let's go to money. Why is it that you don't have enough? It's because you are satisfied where you are. There are people that you should not give them money. Because if you give them money, they will never struggle on their own. <coughs> My sister that I trained last year, she's a married woman with a husband and two kids. And the husband cannot train her in a four-year college. I pick it up myself to do that. My mom called me and pleaded with me to do that. I carried it all by myself. Never asked any member of the family to help me. She graduated in June. I live in America. They live in Nigeria. Is she not supposed to go and look for a job? No. She is waiting for me to find her a job. Think about that. From last year, I washed my hand off. In fact, it started the year before last. It started four years ago, five years ago, I started moving slowly away from everybody back there. So that people can do things for themselves. What about, what I always tell myself is, what about if I decide that I'm going to live in heaven, I don't want to be on earth anymore. Will they not continue their life? As though I never existed. Yes, they will. Don't try to buy love. It will take you nowhere. Don't try to buy your mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your uncles, your nephews, your children love. It is not going to take you anywhere. And I told her, you're waiting for me to come and get you a job. You must be joking. See, there, there's a place for you to help and there's a place for you to move away forever. You help them a little bit, you move away forever. You let them be. Don't try to make people, don't try to become the people's hero. You're not going to gain anything out of that. Don't try to be a hero of your family because what people are doing in Africa, in the Caribbean, in Europe, in India, in Russia, in China, all these places, South Korea, Middle East, Jewish community, Japanese community. Families are in competition. Whose child went to Harvard? Whose child went to Brown? 
whose child went to Stanford, whose child went to this. That's what is happening to Asian fathers and mothers. They are the ones who are paying the price now. And African fathers and mothers too. And Caribbean parents, that's what is killing a lot of mothers and fathers are dying because of this. They will even take a loan to send their children to, to Harvard, to Princeton, just to have a name that they were the ones. It is their family that was the first to send their children to this and that. And they are expecting those children when they come back, get a job, to come and pay those loans. Some of them have mortgage houses. I'm talking about women from South Korea. Women from Japan, men from Thailand, Vietnam, they call my office to tell me what they have done for their children and their children abandoned them. Indian men and women call me from Bangalore, from Mumbai, from different places of India to tell me what has happened. From Punjabi, Pakistanis. Why? Because families are in competition. In a city, it had to be known, oh, these are the group that went to Brown. These are the Brown that went to Howard. These are the Brown, the group that went to this. One thing I like, America, America doesn't even ask you <laughs> where you obtain your degree. They ask you whether you've completed it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. They don't ask you what kind of house you live in, what kind of car you drive. Nobody will ever want to compete with you based on that. That's why I like the Western world and the Western tradition. Go to other countries and see. Those who drive a Mercedes-Benz move together. Those who went to a particular school move together. Those who are bankers move together. Those who are priests and bishops like me move together. Everybody want to go and build their houses on a hill or by the beach or by the... I mean, it's crazy. Competition all over. I'm not here to compete with anybody. Failure is not an option for me, and winning is my destiny. So for you. That has nothing to do with competition. Doesn't mean that I see something that is very good and I want to have something better than that. Does not mean that I'm competing with you. It's simply that's what I like. I want to do it better. Jessica will see something that is already there and she will draw my attention and say, can we walk it out this way and that? Geneva will do the same thing. Victoria will do the same thing. Roslyn, uh, Mary, can you look at this? I saw this. Can't we make our own better than this? I say, I will. And we do it. Why are we doing all this? Because we want to be winners. We want the earth to know that we came here to win. We were born to be winners. We belong to the families of lions and elephants and rhinoceros, the big ones. We are not to be eaten. We are to do the eating. <laughs> Shante must love that. <laughs> Shante and Jessica must really, really like that. Especially Geneva, she will like that a whole lot. I'm no one's prey. You are a predator. You are not a prey. So don't let the don't let the predator loan people get you. We'll talk about that tomorrow. We pray in order not to allow. We pray and fast in order not to allow. We pray and fast to get power to stop failure from calling our names, from stopping people who have failed from drawing us into their dark cave like Tasmanian devils. That's why we pray and fast to prevent failure from calling your name. So please write that down. Maybe let's make it a title. How to stop failure from calling your name. And if you didn't know it, failure do call your name. And until you know it, you will always fail. And winning will not be your destiny. It is your place to stand and say, listen, today 
It's the last day that I'm going to talk about this. That's what you'll say to yourself. Failure, in whatever way you've been appearing to me, whatever format you've been coming to me, you are not allowed to call me, to draw me out, to put me together with failure and mediocrity people. Do not ever call my name. If you didn't know it, many marriages is a call to go and fail. Many education is a call to go and fail. That's why you didn't complete it. Something was calling you to go and disgrace you and shame you and you fell. That's the time that you will have studied to have been a, a, a deep sea diver, an oil field worker, and get professional certification in that and make a hundred thousand a year. And you go and waste it trying to have a four year degree and you never get any. Why failure was calling to that side while winning was just right here for you. And then there are people who are made for college education, four years, master's, PhD, professional training to be lawyers, bankers, medical doctors, or in different, different sections or units of the medical field. And that's winning calling them. Engineering fields, that's winning calling them. And there are people who are not made for university or college degrees. Just like there are people who are not made for marriages. Because you look at your life. Can you tolerate people? You want marriage. Can you tolerate people? Because the other person is coming in to mess all your plans up. <laughs> mess your life up. And if you were meant for marriage, you will say, I'm standing with you. At least you see that both of you are building something. Nobody is trying to cheat each other. But the way you will have loved him to have been 100% is not. At least you will accept 80%. And 20% will be messed up and you let it be. Because you are a marriage material. But if you are a very independent person, you like, this is the way you like things always to be. If it's not this way, it cannot be anybody's way. Please don't go into relationship. Just have a friend and let it be. If not, failure will be calling you to go into serious relationship and marriages for failure, for disgrace, for disappointment, and sometimes possibly for you to lose your mind. What I'm telling you tonight is very deep. Your job is to tell failure, I'm not coming with you. You look at certain things, you say, this is failure. I'm seeing failure, I'm not coming. You guys do not know how many years ago I started praying to, to, to get away from the system that and the culture that I was born into. I hated it. Oh my gosh, I do. If not like people like Jay and Mary, who are Africans, who came into my life, I don't even think that I will see an African person and even give you a face or say hello. Because of my hatred for people from that continent. You will not, you will not understand what I mean. The hatred for their governments, the hatred for their churches, the hatred for their family life, the way it is organized, the way they wasted money over nothing, the way that when somebody is alive, they will not honor you and take good care of you. When you die, the same poor broke people who told you they didn't have money, they will go and bring money under their bed from wherever God knows, I don't know where, to come and do a big lavish funeral celebration. But somebody graduate with a baccalaureate, high school, master's, PhD, professional diplomas, no celebration. They wasted on a marriage that is failure, come calling. Hey, <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys would not believe this. Well, it's good. I don't know whether I should tell it. One guy was very, very big. Very big man. And he went and married this little woman. <laughs> and they did this big, lavish wedding. So I told people, I said, this guy is marrying this woman because this woman is the only one who have accepted to marry him. <laughs> Nobody would want to marry this man. But this girl saw money and decided to go in. I was telling some of my friends that this marriage will not last up to you. This girl is going to grab whatever she can get out of the marriage quickly and she will disappear. Mark my word. But the guy never looked good. To be really truthful to you, he stink. Even God himself will run away from the smell of that guy. Ay, 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 ay. People from the Caribbean, they will say, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Even angels who are sent on assignment to that man, they will say, Papa God, God the Father, will you not change this? Will you, why don't you change and send me to somebody else? I, they will kneel down and plead for their lives. This guy is too funky. No woman want to marry him. <laughs> that girl went in, got what she wanted very quickly, got a car, got put money away, and she vanished. Yeah. Failure came calling. Woo. You were not born for failure. What I'm telling you is so important because God has sent me to raise millionaires and to raise billionaires and to raise people who are going to be leaders and rulers of nations of big corporations. And that is why I've started to pray for those with such a destiny. I'm not praying for God to give me people. I'm praying for God to give me people with such a destiny. See, that's different. There's a difference between, oh God, give me church members. Oh God, give me small circle. Oh God, give me covenant partners. Oh God, give me partners. All those kind of things that we pray. I don't. Mine is specific. Give me people who already have a winning destiny. People who in the book written about them. Because there are books written about you in the Skyrim. I hope you know that. <laughs> if you didn't know, you know it. There's a book written about you. There are secret books written about you in the kingdom of God. And there are books written about you in the kingdom of God that is public record for anyone to access. If you didn't know, you know it. I was a little boy, four or five years old, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 year old women, early in the morning will come to our home and take me, grab me from my mother and gave me the lantern to hold. And they will take me to morning prayers. That's where my, my, my formation happened. My devotion to God happened because of not men, elderly women. And they started to tell me and to tell everybody, this boy is going to United States. I was four or five years old and elderly women were saying that to me. I didn't know anything about America. When I was coming into America, in my dream, the same elderly women, those who are alive and those who are already gone back to be with the Lord, they came in my dream to bring me to this country. That's why everything happened so easily. Those, those whom God sends to initiate you into the things of God are those that you will always be with forever. Mine with, with elderly women. Not young women. Elderly women. Who are many of them are like teenagers at heart. Many of them, their husband have died. And they were devoted to their market or their farm or they were or they but 
First thing in the morning, they were in the church and they would come and grab me. I was the only tiny little child. I didn't see any child there. As I grew up, they would give me the hymn book and ask me to, to sing with them. And I didn't know what they were singing. I will sing along like Zach is doing. I will mumble along until I began to know those songs. And I began to, that's how I began to memorize the hymn book. Mm -hmm. Igabo enye meri chuku galuru gogo kwere kwere na bali bo chichiri. I began to memorize those songs because they were they were songs that I thought they were very nice. And I, and at the end I realized these are these are a summary of everything about God and everything about life that I was singing. Believe, believe. That's what the old women were singing. Believe, believe that your night will turn into day, that the day will come and take over from the night. Believe, believe that the daybreak is coming. You will become a winner. if you, That's what they are singing. What I'm telling you is what they are singing. They are using the word winner. Which means you will be the one that is the victor. The one that has the victory. You will be the winner. If you believe. They say it three times. Believe. Believe. Believe that the darkness will turn into day. And the day will overcome the night. And you will become the winner. I memorized it. It went straight into my mind. It went straight into my brain and it stick right in there. Tell me how any power can defeat me with those kind of things that those elderly women put inside me. When they initiated me into God. Somebody need to initiate you into God if you don't know it. To show you God and mine were elderly women. They showed me who God was. And every other thing I learned from seminary and from university was just book thing. The women show me what is outside the book, and I love that side better. <laughs> Somebody asked me, a, a lady once asked me many, many years ago when I was in Nigeria, the lady asked me and said, do you like women of your age or younger women or elderly women? I looked at the woman and said, why do you ask me such a question? He said, because you are our pastor. And I don't see you with any woman. You treat everybody like business, ministry, but there is no relationship you have with anybody. I said, well, I have a relationship with this family. She said, no, but there is no personal thing there. I said, okay, let me tell you the truth. I like elderly women. So listen to how I answer. I said, I like elderly women. He said, can you tell me their age? I said, from 50 years to 150 years. He said, what? I said, yes. And I said, let me complete. Let me finish. Let me finish because you asked me the question. I like elderly women. And I like, I like women of my age and younger women who behaves and think like elderly women. The woman, her mouth dropped. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she said, you know what? Nobody ever win an argument with your pastor. And she left me alone from that day. She was a nurse. She was a matron of the of the hospital. She left me alone after that. She said, When will you ever be serious? She was telling they were telling my congregational members, she said, I asked this guy whether he likes elderly women, because I always see him with women who who are above his age, you know, 70 years and so on. They will bring him food. Their husband will like him and so on. They will bring him into their families. And that was true. So do you like elderly women? Is that what it means? What the heck? I say, ha, ha, ha. You betcha. 
I like elderly women a lot. And I say, wait, wait, well, let me finish. But I like women who are of my age or younger women. If only they think and they behave like elderly women. I say, I like them. <laughs> And you guys do not know anybody that you see me bring into my staff, into our ministry, must have an elderly woman's behavior. Whether you're a man or a woman, you must have it. And I, yeah, I'm not asking you, even men, if you are a man of any age, you must behave like an elderly woman. If not, I'm not bringing you in. If, you are not allowed to behave like an elderly man. You are not allowed to. No, 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 no. Yep. Go and look at. Go, go and look at. Uh, uh, go and look at. Uh, what's her name? Go and look at Ladri. Ladri is a young woman, but she behaves like an elderly woman. Yeah. Go and look at Mary. Mary, Roslyn, Vivian, uh, Marjorie, Dorothy. Um. Uh, Samantha. Samantha, are you on this line? Samantha? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. Samantha, Juliet, Beatrice, G Geneva, uh, Jessica, Barbara, Shirley, Linda, Beverly. I can go on and on. Lizzie. Lizzie. I mean it. All the women in our ministry. Shante of all people. Yes. Go and look at Victoria. They all have elderly women traits. If you didn't know it, you now know it. Nancy got it. They all got it. Because those people are very smart. They are very wise they will look, they won't say a thing, but when they say something, something happens. They don't make quick decisions. I watched those of them who were married, those elderly women who were married, I watched them. Their husband will, yeah, 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 new, new, yeah, trying to be the head of the family, and the wife will be there looking at him. Just continue what she's doing. I'm serious. Highest thing that if the man is angry or doing, the, 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 the elderly woman will say to the housemaid, please, can you go and get that uh, whiskey and give to sir? Never disrespected him. Say, go and give it to sir. Go and give him wine to drink while the food is getting ready. And he will sit down there drinking and talking out of his head or whatever. Until his friends arrive, his male friend arrive, and they sit and drink and talk and all of that, and then food is brought to them. Never disrespected them, even if they didn't like them. And I watched and I was learning. They don't talk a lot. Those elderly women never who were taking me to morning prayer till I grew up. They don't talk. And you know what I discovered? That's when I learned as a young boy. That men are not the head of the family is a lie. It's a big lie that men are the head of the family. It's a big lie. Men are simply saying that because many of them don't know that they are not in charge of the family. Is the women who are in charge who are the heads of the family? Oh, I have known that. I learned very quickly. Oh. One woman will will. Well, the day that the husband is bringing his paycheck, that's the day she will cook the best food. As he walked through that door, she put, she, she said, hand me the paycheck. Hand me the paycheck. And the man said, hey, 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 call the housemaid. Can you give Sai his food and his wine? The woman is, the woman take the, the envelope, go inside the bedroom. She's counting the money and, and has a notebook. Each of these women, they have notebooks with dates and what they are spending. And I'm like, I mean, they write in their native language, some write in English. I saw it. And they will, they will tell him, they will come back and whisper how much of his own allowance. The woman is out of the man's money, 
the woman is giving him an allowance. You tell him it's under so so and so place. Your allowance is there. In case you want to go and drink with his friend and do things out there. The allowance is there. You don't go to madam. I watch. And there was one whose husband was a judge of the court. Big judge in the state court. That man, you will not even see that man. If you go to their home, you knock on the door. You will see the, the house help or the housekeeper or the house. That I mean, that's the permanent person that comes, cook, clean, do everything, do laundry, iron, and go. Come back in the afternoon and prepare lunch. Go, come back in the evening and go. If you come to that house, you won't see the husband. The husband, you cannot see him. He abandoned everything for the woman to run. For the madam of the house. His paycheck, his life, completely abandoned to that woman. When you come to look for him, the wife will say, tell me what you want to tell him. Except something is very, very important before you see him come out from wherever he used to be in that house. Because they had a story building. The woman was the mouthpiece because the man doesn't speak a lot. And he added that by the only time you see this aggressiveness is in the court when he's deciding whether somebody should die, whether somebody should be sentenced, what should happen. That's when you see his aggressiveness. Outside that, he doesn't talk. You need anything, go and ask my wife. Those are the kind of women that are associated with. Yeah. There is one whose husband was the chief and the sociology of the of the main hospital, the state hospital. He will tell the husband, what are you, what are you doing here? You've not gone to go and give that boy his, 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 his allowance for him to eat. You are depending on this church folk to take care of my son. She called me her son, very fair-skinned lady that was a secretary of a whole university. That's the first time that I realized women can wear pants, that's trousers, or wear shirts. Because you never see that in Africa. That's the first woman I see that was wearing short, very sexy looking. She was in her 60s, entering into her 70s, and she was, she would make her hair different colors. I'm like, what? Never allow herself to be old. Wear gold and diamonds. She would tell the husband, send, send the driver to come and bring the boy. That's me. That's what she called me. Tell the driver to come and bring the boy. You want to depend on church folks to take care of him? And the, and the husband would say, okay, driver, go, 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 go and bring it the car. And at that time, the house said they cooked and they asked me to come and sit with them and eat. And I'm learning because I didn't really know anything. And they were raising me as though I am their own child. Those elderly women, these middle-aged women who were very wealthy. Then they began to show me what life is all about. How do you handle this? How do you do this? It's all by women, not men. Not men. Lizzie, are you on the line? Okay, she's not there. Okay. Okay, that's the woman I told you has twin, twin sons. He has twin boys. And the twin boys studied in the same university in New Delhi, in, in India. And they married twin sisters from India. And the fathers of these Indian girls established, um, what do we call, where, where they make, they make um, uh, there's a kind of, uh, a kind of um, weaving factory that is done by, it's a big industrial outfit. The parent of those twin Indian girls built that in Lagos, Nigeria for his son-in-laws. And they took those two Indian girls, these twin boys took the twin girls back to Nigeria and they have that big outfit. It's a, I don't know how big, how, what, but it was a million dollar business when I left. That's the, that's the, that's the woman I'm telling you. Her name is Florence. Very English, very polished, 
very Scottish. For every one of these women, failure was not an option. Winning was a destiny. Even when their husband refused to make it, those women put their husband aside and went ahead to make it. They pushed their children forward for them to make it. I have not been with any. I have not run around. These women I have not allowed any of these women who took me along by their hands who were not people for whom winning was a destiny. All of them. All their children. I can count all these women. I can count them all. All these elderly women, I can count each of them. All their children are well to do. And they swore, they swore that I am going to be well to do. My mom didn't swear, my father did. But the first people who swore that as long as this earth remains, that failure is not going to be an option for me with those elderly women. They swore. And you need to sway. As long as the sun keeps shining and the moon keeps coming up and the stars have not yet been sealed and the river, the sea and the ocean keep running and the earth remaineth, failure is not an option and failure can no longer call me. Only winning has the right to call me. And where winning is, that's where I'm heading. I want where the music is, where the celebration is, where the good things is happening. That's where I'm heading. You guys do not know that when I am about to do a mighty thing, I don't stay in Wichita. I stay in a city where I can look at success while I'm doing what I'm doing. Because what you see is what you become. That's why when God pick somebody who is nothing, he always take him to the city, to the biggest city of that, of that time. Check your Bible, you'll see it. You're only reading Bible to pray. Check your Bible and you will see the underneath material. Everybody who came to God or God called to himself, he always lead them to the biggest city of that time. Joseph from the bush, to the palace of, of Pharaoh, the capital of the world of that time. Paul to Rome. Moses went to Midian and was staying with the chief man, Jethro, wealthy. Esther to Sexus, the king. Have you not asked yourself, why is God always moving all these people to wealthy people? To the big cities. Why is he doing this? Why don't you sit yourself and ask, why is he doing this? Why is David being moved from the bush to sit on the throne in the state capital? Why are they all being sent to the capital of the world of their time? You should ask yourself that question. Because that is where the power is being played out. Nobody will know you if you're in your village. And God is not a village God. <laughs> Please, can you write it down? God is not a village God. It doesn't mean that God doesn't is not in the village. But he's not a village God. The real thing, God is a city God. He likes the cosmopolitan, the metro. That's where his power is shown. That's why I want you to help me. If you guys want me to move to a big metropolitan city in America, then say it and be willing to contribute to put me there. And even if you are not willing, I'm willing and I'm coming there. And if you do not want to be a winner so as to help me so that we can build God's kingdom, I'm coming there to come and put you to shame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming there to put you to I'm coming there to disgrace you. 
Yep. Failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. Moses was sent back from a small Midianite territory back to the capital of the world, Egypt, because that is where God's eye is focused. For example, in America, the eye of God is not focused on Washington, D.C. The eyes of God is focused on New York and California. That I know for sure. Those are the two biggest states where the eyes of God is focused. They, now let's broaden it. The biggest interest of God in America is in the East Coast and West Coast. Whatever happened in the East Coast and West Coast, the rest of the country follows. You may not like that statement, but that is what it is. Everybody follows the Eastern time. That's what CNN follows and the rest of them. Whether you like it or not, we all follow the movies of Hollywood. Whether we like it or not, we follow Broadway, Times Square, and Wall Street. We follow Lady Liberty. Whether you like it or not, we all look at Washington, D.C., Virginia, Philadelphia. The rest follows what the East Coast and West Coast are doing. And I have been strictly told where to focus my ministry, both in America and around the world. Because you break through in these places, the rest of the world will follow you. The rest of the world is not going to follow you in the south side of America or in the, mid on the, or in the Midwest where I am. No. If your name is known in the East Coast or West Coast, then it will automatically boom. Like Jessica put it, it will boom, boom, boom in the Midwest, boom, boom, boom in the South Side. Eating right, exercising, dancing, new, new dance style, new fashion, perfumes. Where do they all start? West Coast, California, Nevada, that's Las Vegas proper, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Virginia, and, it, and it, then it begin trickling down to the Midwest and to the South. But that is how it is. The East Coast and the West Coast is the deliverance of America. You have to know this for a fact. Because while the rest of the nations were doing bad things, we the Yankees were busy doing freeing, freeing people, welcoming people, allowing people to start their businesses and not limiting them. While people in the down south and so on we're putting people in the cotton field. So I want you to see the supernatural things that are shifted in America. Where people are willing to give people their freedom, they are blessed. That's why the East Coast and the West Coast are more blessed than any other side of the United States. That's why Western Europe is more blessed than Eastern Europe. You have to know this by fact. It all has to do with, do they respect human beings? Do they give human beings of any race, any title, any class, the opportunity to become somebody greater? You think that if Trump lived in Texas or in Atlanta or Augusta, or Mississippi, Alabama, Missouri, he will have made it? No. Hillary is from, is from, is it Illinois? Bill Clinton is from Arkansas. Is that where they live now? Obama is from Chicago and Hawaii. Is that where he lives now? No. 
They are all in the East Coast. There are certain things you want to do. You have to go to where it's happening. And then the rest will follow. Failure is not an option. Winning is your destiny. And when you begin to think this way, the spirit of winning will come upon you. There is what we call the spirit of winning. If you didn't know, you know it. There is a spirit of winning. Why, why are so many people rich in the East Coast and West Coast of the United States? And in some states, it might be just a few people, one or two billion years. You go to the East Coast and West Coast, that's where the majority of the stars are. Why is it so? Open doors for opportunities. And you go to other states, close doors for opportunities. People are still looking at you like in the 1930s and 1920s. Is that where you are going to make it? No. That's why I told people like Zola to move away from Alabama. You don't have no business staying there. Get away from there. Quick! Take your nation and leave. <laughs> She's the president of a nation. <laughs> where are you, Zola? There you go. I told her, take your nation and move. Let's do the exodus. We don't just want to read the Exodus story. Let's do it. She agreed. Now she's back to Virginia. You have no business being where you shouldn't be. I asked my, myself, why is it I entered somewhere in San Diego by the... Uh, towards the Fashion Fair Mall and towards the uh, uh, Mich Mission Valley Mall, I went to both. And on each side of the street, wherever I go, it's all Jags, BMW, Mercedes. I said, ah, these people, why is everybody driving costly cars? And it's not that they are very rich, but they are richer than people in some other states. Why? Failure is not an option. Winning is their destiny. That's what it's all about. That's why when people move from California, from, from the East Coast, either New York, Philadelphia, all those places, New Jersey, Virginia, and they move to places like uh, Utah or, 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 or other, other, other cheap, cheap states like that. They can sell their house and buy three times that kind of a house. A humongous house for little or nothing in, in, the, in the South. And let me warn those of you who want to move to Atlanta, to Georgia, because white kids are making it there. Black kids and Mexicans are making it there. They are far moving there. Those are retirement places. Roslyn and I were discussing today. I said, either Delta employ you or Roslyn, who is the next person who will employ them if he has employment? Okay, she's not there. Either Delta employs you or Tyler Perry employs you. Simple. It's a place for retirement. I'm here. Uh -huh. Is that not the two biggest company? Delta and Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tyler Perry has not finished employing all these people. It's you. <laughs> so get prepared to go and work for Delta. If you are, if you are, you are telling you, oh, Atlanta is the black uh, Jerusalem. Everybody is going there to go and make it. Do you have the connection? 
I don't know. There is a kind of business that flourished there for a certain group of people. But the rest are coming for retirement. It's a welfare state. So think about it before you move. Sometimes I give people advice. They don't want to listen. I told one woman, why are you leaving Philadelphia? I'm going to South Carolina. You are making over 105,000 US dollars. And you are going to South Carolina because your mother left you a house, a two bedroom house. You pay little or nothing for the three bedroom house that you live in Philadelphia because you got cash, you got money. She abandoned her job and went to go and fight for those things that is worthless. Because I look at how much work that thing is worthless. Went to go and get a laser job, have problems until she became a mad, a mad woman, a mental case, because she's not listening. You think that I spend my time trying to help her? No, because I already want her. Do not leave Philadelphia. If you want, go and repay that house while you are working in Philadelphia, while you have that great job with the hospital there. Once in a while, you pop in into South Carolina, find some people and let them put that house in order for you. And you put somebody in there and be getting rent forever. She will not listen. And every time she called me, she come to tell me about one South Carolina boyfriend, man friend, all that. I told her, you know what? This is getting into me. I'm nobody's trash bag. Can you stop calling me? Because what you are telling me is oppressive to me. Number one, you are not listening to me. Number two, the things you are telling me are not helping me. And I cut her off. You are living where the glory of God is for you, for the winners. Please write this powerful key down. Where the glory of God is for you, that's where your winning is. Where the glory of God is for you, that's where your winning is. I am very careful about moving because one move can destroy your life. People do not know why I take time because I have made that mistake twice and I will never make it again. I ask God to make you a winner tonight. I want you to lift up your hand and begin to pray. However, the Holy Ghost lead, lead, lead you, whether, whether you are praying in spirit language, or whether you are praying your native language or English, or Germany or French or Spanish, I will encourage you to pray. If you have, if you have a dialect, a native la, da, dialecta in Spanish, if you have a dialecta, pray in your dialecta. If you speak any other language outside English, I want to hear you pray in that language. If all you speak is English, pray. Tell God to stop failures and people who fell from calling you. And I want you to tell yourself and to tell God that from now on, you are ready to be a winner. Begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Don't keep quiet. Begin to pray. I don't want to be a winner. I am part of the winning team. I stop failure from calling me. I do not want to respond to any failure. Whether in my dream or in any way. Failure, you can no longer call me. I don't need you. Only winners and winning can call me. They are permitted to call me. I 
will not allow myself to respond anymore in life or in death to the losers, to failure. I am a winner. I am a winner. I was born to be a winner, and I am a winner. Jesus has made me a winner. I grab my winnings. Every tool I need to win, I grab them. I am a winner. I am in the winning team. I love winning. Winning is my destiny. I am destined to win. Yeah. Failure must shut up. Failure must die. <laughs> failure is sickness. I hate failure. Amen, 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 amen. Anyone who sent the spirit of death to you doesn't stand a chance. I want you to lift up your voice and say, anyone who sent failure to you in order to kill you, you destroy both the spirit of failure and the spirit of death. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. Decree. Make a decree right now. Make a decree tonight. Make a decree. I decree that nobody who sent death to me will be alive. They will die. Anybody or anything that decide to send death to me will die. And I will not die, but I'm going to live and declare the, the wondrous and the amazing and awesome thing that God has done for me. Anybody who want to take me out is wasting their time. Just say it. Anybody who want me to fail, anybody who want me to die, they are wasting their time because I will not die. I will not be sick. I will never be poor. I am full of good luck. Fortune, favor is following me. I'm a son of favor. I am a daughter of favor. You should say it if you're a girl. If you're a man, you say, I am a son of favor. Hallelujah. Victoria, remind me to remind me to put in bracket in parenthesis that there is prayer at the end of this broadcast for people to pray along. Thank you, all of you. Remember to send your first fruit, and um, I will see you tomorrow. Is what Saturday? Yeah, at twelve noon tomorrow. Yeah, our normal program. So we'll meet tomorrow at twelve. 12 noon, and also uh, we'll meet at 12 noon only tomorrow, and Sunday 12 noon only, and um, and we will not meet again until Wednesday and Friday, and that is that. There are certain things that I'm doing in the Chicago area. If it, if it required me to travel, then I will leave here and, and travel, but we are still carrying on our program. If, if that, if it really comes to that, then I will fly out. Because there are certain things that if it comes to certain things, then I'll have to be there. 
If I feel that the glory of God is being challenged, then I'm coming. And, and things are going to change. I am coming. That's why, that's why God has to send Moses, go. Esther, go. Jacob, go. Joseph, go. It's all about go. When you reach there, things are going to change. Whether that thing like it or not is going to bow because you are there. That's why if you walk into anyone's life or any family, they don't they reject you. Well, forever they will never see any good thing come to them. Because your appearance, your appearance is the glory of God. Is the four things appearing when you when you are there? If it's a if it's a lawsuit, that lawsuit will go in the favor of the person you are trying to protect. Why? Because you are there. Were the children of Israel taken out of Egypt? All these years they cried? No. When did they leave Egypt? Who arrived? Moses arrived, then they left. <laughs> the family of Jacob will have died of hunger. Who arrived in Egypt? Joseph. The Jewish people will have all been wiped out of history. Who arrived in the palace of Sexus? Esther. Somebody, a visitor must come, must arrive. Ha, ha, ha. Please, can somebody write that down for me? The visitors are coming for me. I want to do a broadcast on that tomorrow. The visitors are coming for me. <laughs> Woo! Yes, Lord. The visitors are coming for me. Yay, 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 yay. They are coming for me. That way, y'all sing along. The visitors are coming the for me. Yep. God must send. Yeah, God. Yep. <laughs> God will send the visitor to go. God will send the visitor to go. So by the time you, by the time anything wants to happen, you are already covered. It's like you are walking to go and pay your bill. And, while, and when you call them to pay your bill and they tell you, oh, it's already paid. You say, how? They say, oh, it's already paid. Another month you call them to pay your bill, they tell you it's already paid. You say, can you print me? They print out to show that it's already, and they send it to you, and it says zero, balance due, 0, 0.00. <laughs> Just as it happened to that woman in, um, where is it? New Mexico. Yep. La Cruces, New Mexico. She told me that she ran the light. They, she turned that heat on throughout winter, never paid a dime. The bill was big. So she called me. Whether she was calling me to pay her bill, she knows I won't do that. I told her that somebody, I'm going to send somebody to pay the bill. I was joking. I'm telling you, I thought I was joking. I didn't know what I was saying to her was prophecy. Then she received the next bill and it says 0, 0.00. Something like that. It has happened twice to people in New Mexico. Two women in New Mexico. One, they told her that the electric bill was 50 cents. Where do you ever hear that somebody's electric bill is 50 cents? So, yeah. Somebody went and paid people's electric bill twice. And the Holy Spirit is my witness. It wasn't me. I never called. Somebody did. And I know who did. Jesus went, sent an angel to go there and pay. Because that's what the woman was told. That somebody called, they don't know who, and the person paid with a strange credit card. Strange credit card. And it went through. <laughs> somebody called and paid. This is exact what they told her. Somebody called and paid with a strange credit card. And it went through and they paid off everything. They paid everything off. 
that's what I was telling you guys in the afternoon session. I said, this thing has to become physical, tangible. I'll see you all tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye, ladies.